<laughs> I just went before we started because I was like, oh. yeah. Look at that. That's not even real. That's me pushing out. Oh. <laughs> well, it is real. Oh. Yeah, it's no. real. This is. It's is that, really a baby. Is that an espresso baby? Yeah. It's a poop baby? <laughs> Double espresso I baby? I pooped twice yesterday. Aren't you guys excited? For wow. Me? Most I women did too, are but that's because I'm on period. I, <laughs> I'm constipated. Don't you poop on your period? I've never really noticed that. Oh, yeah. Huh. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got diarrhea on my period. Yeah. Before and after. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know. I've just We're always, always talking about pooping. I've always had problems oh, with pooping. So. Pivot. Isn't that a line from Pivot. Friends? Pivot. From Friends. <gasps> You just quoted Fred. I did. We Pivot is actually Fred. a good word for today's episode. Yeah. Uh, we... Oh, my butt's vibrating. <laughs> well, Hello. <laughs> free ride over there. Say you listen, but you miss it. Welcome to another episode of Yeah, No, I Know. But before we get started, a little disclaimer. Nothing in this podcast is being claimed as fact. Most everything discussed here are our own individual, personal opinions, beliefs, and experiences. We encourage you to always do your own research and form your own opinions. Nothing one person says on this podcast goes for everyone here. Each individual speaking is speaking only for themselves and no one else on the podcast. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Well, welcome to the I Know I Know podcast. Um, We are here uh, in Jenna. Okay, I suck at this, you guys. (laughs) I've totally (laughs) missed it. We're don't. here in Jenna's garage. We're in Jenna's garage. <laughs> um, we're in the babe cave. It we're in the babe way cave. Cooler the babe than a garage. <laughs> That's true. It's a pretty freaking cute garage, though. Oh, it's we did good. adorable. Smell this. It kind of smells like dick when you first smell it. <laughs> <laughs> like it tastes does, good. Does it taste good? Yes, Is it does. That what okay. smell it. Smells like. I mean, a dirty one. Who's? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> whose are you smelling? <laughs> If you can't see? see us, we are sniffing it her like orange mock juice mosa. Has been sitting for a while. Like mm-hmm. alcohol and orange juice has been sitting for a while. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, her, I made sure her son have alcohol. Tastes fine. Yeah, too. but I have um, <laughs> orange sparkling stuff. So you can try that. Way to hold out on me. <laughs> okay, well, so basically, we just did our relationship um, advice. Okay, you guys asked us questions. <laughs> Getting we over kinda... assholes. Yeah. That's basically yeah. what the last one was. Well, How do you know when to move on? Yeah. All that kind of stuff. And it was just such a dense subject. Like, Yeah. We had a lot of people wanting more, asking more questions. Um, we got a lot of stuff specifically about divorces and how to move on from relationships and heartbreak. And we have, in my opinion, two S experts here on Divorce how to... Div- oh. <laughs> Definitely not a title that's, I thought I would have. But it's that's not, okay. not divorce yeah. experts, just how to move on and I know what you kind mean. of thrive after going through yes. something like that, you know? Yes. And we had a lot of people asking. So we wanted to kind of make this way a part pivot. two. Yeah, way <laughs> to pivot. Kind of a part two on relationships and, okay, we talked about breakups, now how to move on. How do you guys, you know? So should we start with like some of your girl's stories of like you both have been through a divorce and... Yeah. Jenna? Well, let's see. I don't even know where to begin, but I guess when I left my husband was when I, well, first of all, when I left my husband, I was out for like six months. Like I didn't just be like, oh, okay, like I'm going to go get my shit together. Like I was laid up in bed. My mom pretty much like took care of my kids for me. I was like dead to the world. I was so depressed. I, I, I want to say I didn't eat, but I ended up eating a lot more. Um, and I do that too. Uh, I was say, some people are the opposite. Really cool. No, I'm an emotional eater. I yes, same. Yes. It makes me happy. <laughs> yep, exactly. It's because I can, we can control something. Mm-hmm. I can tr- control what's going in my body. Um, it's gonna make me happy for the minute, and then I'll start again in the morning. Like I'll I'll diet in the morning, and then I never do, and mm-hmm. I just binge at night. So anyway, I was super super depressed. I, um, just so sad and um. Obviously, like, my kids would come in, and, like, I would hang out with them, and that would, like, get me motivated, and eventually, little by little, I would take steps, and, like, that's when I was talking about last episode, where I would, like, go out places that I used to go, but I think the very first thing I did was I started to read books. Like, Mm -hmm. I sought out books that were um, 
important to me. So like I valued my religion and my relationship with God and I felt like he was the thing that was going to help me and give me the strength that I was lacking to get through this and to get over it. Um, when I did actually leave my husband, uh, it was hard. Obviously, like something I said, I mean, I kind of left it like, oh, there was a piece of glass in my daughter's forehead. Like, okay, yeah. on to the next subject. Pretty... On the next last episode, if you want to hear about that. Yeah. Absolutely so, crazy. I mean, she. What, what happened, I'll just say it real quick because I like watched it. I'm like, oh my God, that sounds awful. <laughs> it sounds like yeah, a it's, horrible parent. It's traumatizing. But I had to, no. I, I locked my husband out of the house. Um, he was very scary, very threatening. Like, um, didn't know what he was going to do. It was just me and my daughter. My son was at his dad's. And um, so I locked him out because I think he was just on a good one. And my daughter was running to the back door and um, he ended up punching the glass to get in. And she was running towards the door as he punched it. And the glass just flew and she got little like scrapes and stuff. And I just remember her turning around and looking at me and being like, Mommy and her eyes were huge and there was little bits of blood running down her forehead. And I was oh like, gosh. oh my God, I need I need to go. I called my mom. I called the police. I was like, I need to get out of here. I called my son's father and mm -hmm. I said, I'm leaving Mike. I'm leaving my ex. If I ever go back to him, you take our son from me. Because I knew that was the only way I wasn't going to go back. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. It's really hard to know, not go back. Even though like... You always say, like, if I were in that situation, I'd be gone. Huh. Yeah, me too. Same, but no. So um, I I um, went to, like, their, uh, this counselor at my church, and he told me, he's like, if you're there constantly, like, in Mike's ear, telling him what to do, trying to fix him, trying to do this, then God can't speak to him. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God. Okay, so I'm standing in the way of him being better. So I could leave for my daughter. I could leave for my husband. I couldn't leave for me. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to do things for myself. And it takes how practice to... to leave for yourself. Like yes. I went through other relationships where I left for myself and every time I did it, I got better and better and better at it yeah. and had more self-respect like at the yes. end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it we're takes a while. worth it. And I think as women, we just tend to be, you know, givers and caretakers and selfless and we, we bleed ourselves dry and then we end up having resentment and then that makes us not good wives and not good partners and not good friends and you know and so, people are very manipulative oh my god making it feel like it's your fault mm -hmm. that they did that or that they said that and really at the end of the day it's not and mm -hmm. that's you just can't blame your actions on other people like that right. well what is that saying like takers will take as much as they can if mm -hmm. they're willing to give mm -hmm. so um but yeah, so I, I, I went to a counselor, left, um, sought out a bunch of books. I went to a Christian bookstore that was in town, and I would go like once a week, and I would just grab like all the books. That, like I'd sit there and open a few of them and read them. If they seemed to like resonate, I'd grab them and take them home and read Audible's them. Audible is great for this too. Like if you don't, yes. or like if you're not like a reader, like obviously if you're listening to this right now, you yes. probably like um, audio type stuff. And I have so many books on my Audible, like... There's like unfuck yourself. There's like the subtle art of not giving a fuck. I love the F word. Um, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Like there's so many great books. So, I mean, that's a really great place to start. There's a huge library. So yeah. I don't I didn't even read. think about that back then. But yeah, I love I don't know if it was around back then. Like maybe on cassette. I like fall yeah. asleep. Like if I want to take a good nap, I'll like turn on Audible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I can't. I'm like, uh... I do that with church. <laughs> Chris and Chris and Larry. <laughs> but it's just like Larry's voice. I'm sorry, but like they're, the voice, it's very soothing. Like it's yeah. just this, Larry know. will put me to sleep real fast. We're talking about her specific pastor. Yeah. At her I figured. Three he's, of them. he's a great pastor, but he is a little snooze. Yeah. Were there any Anyways. specific books that you remember that really yes, like helped you? Yes, I tried you? to find it because I wanted to say it on here, but I didn't want to say it and not be able to find it. And I believe the name of his, name of it was God, What Are You Waiting For? Uh -huh. hmm. And I can't find it. I will keep searching and try to find it, but I swear that book changed my life. I bought like 20 copies of it and I kept it in my car just to have on hand when I had friends that were having difficult times. I'm like, here, you have to read this book. <laughs> so it was so good. And it and it wasn't just like about relationships. It was just about every single aspect of your life. There you feel like you're waiting for something or something's not happening or it didn't happen the way you wanted it to. And oh, it's I like, need to read this which book. is important oh, it's because so good. if you're having a hard time walking away from a relationship that's not good for you, it's not just the relationship. Like yeah. that is seeping through in other parts of your life yes. where you're feeling it like just insecure or like whatever. So I feel like that's yeah. kind of a, it's not like a, oh, I don't want to leave this relationship. So I need to read about relationships and how to be better here. It's like, mm -hmm. you need to 
you need a whole tune-up everywhere, I think. Um, Well, I have a question. So as a woman of faith and divorce is, you know, a big no-no in the church. I mean, not to say that there aren't tons and tons and tons of divorces within the church, but how how did that affect you? Did it affect you, um, like, people judging you or just your own guilt that you carried? Um, I actually didn't get a lot of judgment once I left. Uh, it was kind of like a finally type thing is the, more of the response that I got. But for me personally, it was hard for me to leave because... Um, of my faith and like I just was like I need I knew I needed to give it 110% but I can tell you for like a good six months I went to bed every single night praying the same prayer and it was God just tell me what to do and I'll do it I don't even care if you want me to stay I'll stay if you want me to leave I'll leave like just just freaking tell me Mm -hmm. like I don't you know and then and then I feel like he does tell you in subtle ways and this can be for anything in your life and you're just like okay but really did I was, you really mean that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was going to say, do you look back now and think that there was more Absolutely. signs that you're like, oh, Absolutely. God was showing me? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it took my daughter getting hurt. Mm-hmm. That was that was the thing that you cannot like ignore. You can't excuse it. You can't be like, well, maybe. It was like, I hear. I well, Mama Bear is like, oh, hell no. Yes. Absolutely not. Well, and I kind of, and this was actually, I think I said like it happened at night, but it actually happened the next morning, that, that night. Um, I knew I was going to leave the next morning. Um, and it hadn't even happened to my daughter yet, but she got, it was the first time I had seen her see something happen between us. And he had pushed me down that night. He woke up at like three o'clock in the morning, like cussing, screaming at me, telling me he never would have married me if he knew I was going to end up looking like this. And, oh, just horrible, horrible things out of the blue. And my daughter comes in as he's like, you know, putting his hands on me and she's like, stop hurting my mommy. I was like, oh my God. So I was like, okay, in the morning, I'm packing up, I'm out of here. And then when I woke up, he was going crazy again, or still, I don't even know if he went to bed and all that happened. So like I had, it already happened, but like God was like, just in case you forgot last night, here's this too. Not saying like I think God tried to get my daughter to be her, but like I think a lot worse. Sometimes you need to hit rock bottom and like get a serious wake up call before you get a kick in the pants to do something about it. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So... Um, man, yeah, I, so I've never been through a divorce. Um, my mom had, she's had a few marriages. Um, and wow, I've never actually like shared the story with uh, anyone other than my husband. Um, but the story that you're talking about with your daughter, um, reminded me when I was, I was probably like four or five and my parents were divorced and I, you know, shared in the last episode that my dad had a drinking problem. And for the most part, he was a functioning alcoholic. But um, there was a time where he came, I believe they were already divorced at this point. Um, and he came to pick us up to take us to his house. And my mom wouldn't let him put us in the car because he had been drinking. And he got really mad and really violent. And he took my mom by the throat and, like, held her up against the wall. Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah, you can be, I think I was like four or five. I don't actually know. That's Um, how old Sky was. My mom's Mm -hmm. only talked about it a couple times with me. It's Mm -hmm. kind of something we just don't really talk about. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's crazy how being so young, you can remember something like that so vividly. And I remember like trying to help my mom and I like tripped and fell. Yeah. It's, um, Yeah. That's something I've like never shared with anyone, but just you talking mm-hmm. about that, I felt like I needed to share that with people. Yeah. Just, you know, like and you said, and my mom obviously she had already divorced him, but it was like she needed to do whatever she could at that point to like protect her children. You know, yes. Mama Bear comes out, and and I think that's important to to note too is like a lot of parents think, oh well, my kids are young, they're not going to remember this, mm. right? So like maybe there's time, and you were you were four or five. My daughter was three and four, I left before she was five. And she even came out later telling me things that Did she, she saw that I didn't even know she saw. She was like, I remember, <clears throat> I, I remember being in the kitchen and seeing daddy hitting you with an electric guitar. And I then she was hiding behind the kitchen counter because she didn't want to them to us to know that she saw. I, I had no idea. Yeah. Until I, later. I just wow. remember my mom married my stepdad when I was four. So it was before I was four. Yeah. So I was really so young. So this is three and four, you guys. So, I mean, yeah. they know. These kids know what's going on. 
And when, yeah. it's, when it's traumatic like that, it gets ingrained in your memory, mm-hmm. unfortunately, you know? Yeah. So one of the questions I was going to ask too, you know, for both of you, but like, it, like where you kind of already answered it, but where, where is that line drawn when enough is enough? Cause I think so many women and I know people personally that are going through a relationship that in my opinion is too abusive, whether it's emotional or it's gotten maybe a little physical. And to me, I'm like, okay, that's red flag. Like, why don't you just take your kids and leave? Like, why are you staying with this person? But to them, like, they're still there. And, they, you know, so where where's that line drawn? Like, is it with the kids or should it be before that? Like, it's got to be before that because how can you take care of, I mean, I'm not a mom yet, but, like, how can you properly take care of your children and you show them what a mom? <laughs> Thank you. How can you show them what a strong woman is if mm-hmm. you aren't there yourself? Yep. And I feel like I hear a lot like that women are feel stuck because they don't have the money to live on their own mm-hmm. or they they just can't support themselves and usually it's financially. So I think we touched on that in a different video, but it's super mm-hmm. important to like be that for yourself somehow or have a support system. But for me, like enough is enough. Like if a relationship isn't enriching my life, then it needs to go, whether it's a friendship or, you know, a, a marriage. And I believe in giving 110% too. I did that with my marriage. Not that it was perfect because giving 110% doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you try as hard as you can and you exhaust your resources. You go to counseling, you read self-help books, you work on yourself, you surround yourself with people who support you and being an empowering woman and strong woman that you want to be. But like when it gets to a point where just like there are just no good days and you're just feeling bad and it's doing damage to you, that's enough for me, whether it's physical or mental, um, you know, and I feel like everyone's idea of what's too much or is enough enough like comes from their childhood about how their father treated their mom and what they saw and what they were trained to think is like normal. Like I was in an abusive relationship in my early 20s where he would break glass, he would throw things, he would um, scream and yell and be very emotionally abusive. He even stood outside of one of my apartment complexes when I had left him, screaming at the top of his lungs that I had STDs and this and that. And like, you know, and I went back to that guy like multiple times because Mm -hmm. I had a dad who kind of yelled at my stepmom a lot and wasn't the nicest to her. And I saw that. And so like, I accepted that for myself. And as I got smarter and read more self-help books and like, like kind of became my own woman, I like learned like that doesn't serve me. That doesn't make me feel good. And that's when you need to walk away. And on the flip side, I have to say that if you're listening to this and you've been married for any amount of time and you feel like you're like in like a lull, like those exist in marriages. Marriages are not easy and they're not always going to be perfect. And I'm not saying like, when it just doesn't serve you anymore, or it feels it doesn't feel good anymore, you should leave. Like that's not what marriage is about. Marriage mm-hmm. is very difficult. And you know, the thing is if your partner is putting in the same amount of effort as you are, like you both need to be putting in 110%. Mm-hmm. Like you can't be putting in 70% mm-hmm. and they eh, sometimes when they feel like it and not being emotionally abusive, you know, want to give you a little bit here and there. And like like I I distinctly remember someone's comment saying, like, basically they would get an argument and then he would do one thing that like made her think, oh, this is the guy I fell in love with and she would stay. But you can't let yourself forget about all the other shit. Mm -hmm. Write it down if you have to, do a video diary after every single instance. Um, That's what I had with my marriage. I actually had a list of things that were, would happen or things the way that I'd be put down. Um, And I would bring it up in counseling and kind of go through my list and be like, this is how I felt. This is how I felt. And when I had realized I had a partner that wasn't interested in that and told me it was all my problem and I needed to go to counseling and it was my bad and like had nothing to do with them, that's when I realized that I didn't have a partner for life. I didn't have someone that had my back. I didn't have someone that gave a shit about my feelings. He was selfish at the time and it just wasn't right for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's kind of for me when I was like... This actually, I divorced almost three years years ago. We separated in December, right Mm -hmm. after my 30th birthday. And I remember basically coming out and I, at my birthday party, so many friends came to me and they were like, why was he nowhere near you during your party? Like he was never near you, never checking in on you. You know, as a good partner, you, ch- you check in on your partner. Like, how are you? How are you doing? What can I get for you? You hang out, you enjoy the moment together. 
I pretty much never saw him. I think the one thing he did for me that night was like put my shoes in the car for me. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, I never even saw him hang out with you. And I'm like, yeah, welcome to my life. Like, I feel like I'm never enough and he never wants to be with me and, mm -hmm. you know, would rather be other, other places. And that would happen at other events too. It wasn't just my 30th birthday. So I think it was like the next morning where I was like, I started crying and I was like, okay, something's got to give here. You either have to agree to go back to counseling with me or we need to walk away from this. And I remember him saying, why are you crying? Are you on your period or something? And I was like, <laughs> Our rel that was after I started crying after he told me that he was just done. And I started crying and that's when he said, why are you crying? Are you on your period or something? I'm like, uh, no, my partner of the last seven years just told me he didn't want to be with me or put in the effort. Like that's heartbreaking. Yeah. But at the same time, I knew that I couldn't live like that anymore. I was like, mm -hmm. life has to be more than this. Mm -hmm. Like I have to, you have to be happier. So for me, it's funny because <laughs> now I look back and I think it's kind of funny, but I don't think he thought I was going to move on as quickly as I did. Like he wanted to continue sleeping together and stuff like after, and I had already started dating other people. So I like cut it off, but we managed to still continue to be friends because he's a good person. Like we weren't right for each other and he didn't put in the effort, but you know what? I'm kind of glad that he didn't because <clears throat> it came out faster that we just weren't meant to be together mm -hmm. and we could both move on with our lives. Um, but I started reading a lot of books. Um, the seven habits of highly effective people. I'll link some books for you guys. If you're watching on YouTube, um, I'll link some books for you guys, but that book really talked about a lot of business stuff about how to like carry yourself and deal with things. And then also talked about like how to be independent before you can be interdependent. Mm -hmm. So interdependent so meaning important. with the relationship because a lot mm -hmm. of people think they can fix people. But unfortunately, those people need to sort their own shit out like on their own. Like they need to come to their own like epiphany and think, okay, what am I doing with my life, you know, and make changes. Like you're not going to inspire anyone to make changes for the most mm -hmm. part, like unless it's kind of a topical issue. I feel like it's just not really gonna, there's just a lot of deep seated issues with people's childhood and trauma yeah. that they need to deal with. And I can usually spot it, you know, with people that I've dated, I'm like, you, I know exactly what happened before they even told me. And I'm like, you need to go to counseling for that and work it out. Yeah. So there's I read it's between changing somebody and there's a difference between being committed and growing together. And it right. doesn't mean you have to grow together, but you're both growing in your own ways. Right. To better yourselves and be better for the other person. And they have to want to. Yes. Because you could go to counseling yeah. all day long, but if they're not really willing to, to reach other. to those yeah. deep, dark depths where those secrets and those traumas are, yeah. they can't walk, work through them and they come out and manifest yeah. themselves in different ways. I've yeah. known so many people recently that are married and going through issues and it, for whatever reason, it always seems to be the guy, but they're like, oh, I'm not going to counseling. I'm like it's a pride thing, I think. What? They're like, like one person said, um, why would I tell a complete stranger everything about me and expect them to be able to fix our problems if we can't fix them ourselves? I think I'm like a mediator is so important. Absolutely. I mean, unbiasedly. I don't think we all have our own interpretation. We can say the three of us can it's perception. Say you're not, it's all perception. You could say something with a certain tone, and I'm going to take it one way. Brooklyn's going to take it another. You know what I mean? So like, it's always good to have some. I mean, the the mediator is going to take it her own way, but at least. You can hear it back. We we went to counseling, and I mean, she would literally have us talk to each other while she's watching, and be like, "Okay, Jenna, what do you feel like he just said?" And I'm like, "Well, he meant this," and she's like, "Okay, did what you did mean he actually that, say?" Exactly, and it was like it was mind opening to be like, mm -hmm. "Oh, okay, so this I read it this way because of how I was raised and how I was, you know, like learned how to read people and learn language and, and tones and facial expressions and vice versa." You make so, it mean something that it doesn't. Exactly. Um, it's so crazy. It is crazy. I went to like a three-day thing, and I wish I could remember the name of it. <laughs> I'll have to think of it. But it's it's almost culty in the end because they try and get you to enlist other people. Mm -hmm. But I got a lot out of it. It was like people coming come up coming up on stage and like being like, my father threw me downstairs when I was like seven, and the guy's like, okay, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel that he was mad at me and that I'm worthless in this. And the guy's like. What is it? What it was? It what actually happened? Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Your dad threw you downstairs. That's all that happened. Mm -hmm. He didn't mean anything by it. He was upset, and now your whole life, you've turned it into this big thing that really means mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. if and you you've gotta let it go. Yeah. If you yep. listen to Dr. Joe Dispenza, he is a brilliant person. Um, he talks about how 
our memories, like it's something crazy, like 80% of our memories in our mind are actually not what happened. Like oh, yeah. we make right. these totally. things up. And if you actually look back to the actual event, that's like we elaborate it so much more in our minds and then we're and we also justify ourselves too right and, we'll, and then we're stuck in this process of like these memories that aren't even real and we hold on to this trauma that wasn't even necessarily like you said as bad as we made it up in our own minds to be yeah and we have all the tools nowadays where like you cannot blame your past for the way you act today i mean mm-hmm. i have seen mm-hmm. like it does shape you in a way and you have to do a lot of work and it does make things harder and there are people that have gone through way worse things than I could even imagine. Mm-hmm. And they have it different. And they have a longer road ahead of them. Mm-hmm. But you can be the person that you want to be, like, no matter what you've been through. And yeah. it takes work. But, I mean... I don't think anybody would see me and my how I approach life and be like, oh, yeah, she used to get the shit kicked out of her. Right. No one you would look at I me mean? and ever no. think that I would allow someone to abuse me physically right. and emotionally but exactly. here we are because and it's you, made me who I am absolutely and you it, know? It, it will shape you it will affect you it's it's how is it going to do that is it going and how to, are you going to let it exactly I I used it to uh as a stepping stone I used it to make myself stronger and to build off of that and say I'm never going back to that I'm never going to be like that again I'm, and you do you know, better for you right so it's not an excuse it's a reason it's a it's a pushing point Right. And Mm -hmm. I will say back to the counselor thing, there are certain counselors that do more damage to your relationship than good. Mm -hmm. Um, The Empowered Wife, the book is awesome. And I'm pretty sure that is the one where she talks about, they have their own counselors that you can get hooked up with that like use her teaching method, which I was um, tempted to look into until I found one. I think she calls it like coaching or something. Yeah. There's something coaches. I forget what it's called, but um, she was, she talks about how certain counselors will let you just sit on the couch there and talk basically horrible about your partner Mm -hmm. when that actually is doing more damage. And so I actually found a counselor and what I did is I would email counselors and say, hey, I like live by the book, The Empowered Wife, and kind of these are the principles of it. Like where does your belief system like lie with how you counsel couples? Mm -hmm. Like how do you go about things and how do you do it? Because I didn't want to waste any time and money sitting on someone's couch that like, would allow that kind of stuff to happen, you know? And so I found someone that's awesome and she is like exactly spot on with that book. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. But like going through the holidays and stuff without a boyfriend or girlfriend that you may have broken up with, it's hard, you know? And I think it goes back to self nurturing and doing things for yourself that you're going to enjoy and keep like reminding yourself what you deserve and read some of those books Mm -hmm. and like, they will empower you. They will ignite a fire in you to do better for you. And you'll realize like there's something better for me out there. And everything always happens for a reason. So if you broke up with somebody that you think you might supposed to, you're, is meant, you're meant to be with, you will be with them. Mm-hmm. It will happen. But that doesn't mean you can't work on yourself in the mm-hmm. interim. Yeah. You know? I love, I think we've talked about that book a couple times before, The Empowered Yeah, Life. I'll talk about it forever. <laughs> yeah. So I love two things about that book. Like Kristen said, number one, it talks about like write a list of things that you love doing um, that make you happy and then do at least one of them every single day. I keep it on my fridge. Yeah. That was something I started like making notes in my phone and trying. It's hard. It's hard to be intentional. Because you get caught up that. in work. Right. Yeah. You know, and then I love the other thing too, is it talks about like Her biggest thing is working on yourself rather than trying to fix your partner or change Mm -hmm. things about them. And that's what you guys were talking about. And I think it's so powerful when you are having issues and you take a step back and you're like, okay, I can't change them, but I can change myself. I can change my, like one time I heard on um, this podcast I was listening to, it was Ed Milet's and this guy, I don't know who he was, but he impacted me. He said, the only things that we can control are our actions our responses, our attitude, and our effort. And those four things, those are the only things that you have control over. And and they change the other person without even realizing it. Right. The way you react mm-hmm. and respond, you shape what you want from them. Yep, exactly. It's, that book gives you tons of examples. Yeah. That's a really good call out because... Mm-hmm. I thought the same thing. I was like, well, it'll be like an example of like, oh, I hate when he leaves his clothes on the floor. You speak from your desires and what you want to your partner, not what you Mm -hmm. want them to stop doing. So for instance, you just say, I 
love when the house is clean. I love when we clean up together and then they know that that's a way to please you and mm-hmm. they start doing it. Yeah. So it's all about that. It's One, cool. like just a little side off note of that because I, so Andy, my husband, he, when we first got married, he, I called it his undie pile. He would <laughs> get up in the morning and he would go to the shower and right behind the door to the bathroom, he would drop his undies and get in the shower and the undies would just pile up and pile up and pile up. <laughs> and my best friend would joke, she would come over and she'd be like, oh, it's been, let's see, four days since Brooklyn did laundry because there's this little undie pile, you know? And it drove me nuts at first and like, like to the point where I just like wanted to strangle him. I'm like, pick or up. Or the wet your, towels on the bed. Right? Oh I'm like, gosh. pick up your damn underwear. But then I read something one time and it was, I believe it was from a woman who was widowed from um, being married to someone in the military who passed away on duty. And she was like, those little things that irritated me, I missed them. Mm-hmm. And I, I know I'm like, I could cry just thinking about yes. like not having his undie pile there. But so it just took something that was so simple and that irritated me to have a different perspective, like what if he wasn't here and what if that undie pile wasn't there? And so then I just, rather than getting mad and annoyed at it, I would look at it and I would just smile and be like, you know what, I'm thankful that my husband's still here. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful that he's alive. And so it just kind of shifted my perspective and then now we moved and so he doesn't have the same undie pile and I'm like, oh, I kind of miss his little undie pile behind the door. (laughs) And it's crazy too, the way that you change your attitude about something, Mm -hmm. you are just happier all around. Like you don't notice as many annoying things when you're like, you just let something roll off your shoulder, like water off a duck. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's hard, especially if you're more of a pessimistic person like I am. Like I see the undie pile or see the wet towel and I'm like, oh, but the more energy I give to that the more I snowball that entire like feeling throughout my whole day yeah and it's I'm still haven't mastered it but I'm trying to get better at speaking of lists of things I feel like we should collectively go to dinner and come up with one for all three of us that we could do because we get together to do this and to do hair but like where's the nail salon appointments and all the fun stuff wait what do you mean we should do more of that Oh, like go to different places? Oh, yeah. As a group. Yeah, like going to get our nails done. Like, look at my jacked ass toenail. Hello. Oh, I could show my toes right now, (laughs) yeah. I think, wait, I think I have like. It might have worse. I I just can't show you. I got two painted and three came off. (laughs) Because it's the gel, so it just like pops off. You can see it on camera. Well, that's why I'm always wearing press ons, and they're all over the place. Well, so maybe we should do some girl time together instead of just working. You know what we need to do? Go shopping. Well, we are going shopping. No, 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 no. no. Uh -uh. Baby shopping. We need to go get waxed because my dear friends (laughs) have not been waxed, and I promise you, viewers, we are going to have a show. We won't like, (laughs) like we'll film it, but not like PG version. But like you guys, you hot wax or just something wax? What? Yeah. What else would you? Who cares about anything else? I don't care about that. <sighs> you will. I don't care if you I care are about single. It, but... I don't care if you like just never even look down there. It makes you feel so sexy and so clean and like Nick. It's would like my love. happy place. I love Nick would love <laughs> if I had no hair there. But should I just laser it? Then it will like never come back after like 13 times. I feel like you probably you and I probably don't have there's a, a lot, lot of there's yeah. a lot going on like, down there. Oh well excuse me because I'm Hispanic. No because you told me that we had this conversation already where you're like no it's it's, it's a lot. And I'm like yeah I don't really got like have a that five problem. o'clock shadow on my legs. I get hairy from here down and that's it just my calves that's like it i have like blonde hair it would still change your life it would still change your life gosh it's not i'll uh, let me watch you get waxed and see just how painful it is it's not if you go to the right person if you go to the right person i am getting your yoni waxed is is that is (laughs) that what your yoni yoni that's what they call it in the uk (laughs) i think a yoni i've never heard of a yoni (laughs) yeah sort of like a your your fanny your hoo-ha fanny they call it cha-cha fanny Fanny's your butter butt in America. Oh, give a, yeah, that's your right. Fanny, yeah. Give us some, give us some for JJ nicknames down below. Punani. I want to hear Punani. Crotch. <laughs> you got your crotch wax. <laughs> Let us know how it feels, like on a scale one to ten. I say for JJ a lot. JJ. I say Vahina too. Vahina. That's like a taco. Vahina is that classic? It is a taco. A Vahina. Okay, what do you guys call your, uh, your... I call it a hoo-ha. What do you guys... Hoo-ha. What about the male oh, what ones? what does he call it? The male ones. I just say pee-pee. <laughs> I'm like a five-year-old. Yeah. I call it a pee-pee. <laughs> or a I leader. never use the word cock. That's not a word no. I use. 
Yeah, I the would. Just penis is like you feel it. dirty saying it. Yeah, I don't I know. I don't dick. like to call things by it either. Yeah, I'll say dick. Yeah. You also like when I'm breastfeeding and stuff. You also say like titties. I'm like, oh, I've never called my boobs that. Titties. I guess I say pee pee. Um, Nick calls I them say titties pee-pee. a lot, so it's rubbed off on me. Yeah, yeah. Well, now titties. they're just milkies. That's what we. Oh, now they're yeah. milkies. <laughs> the milkies. Um. Wow. We went so, like I guess, squirrel on this oh, one. Five. Yeah, we, we still got time. Thirty-five minutes. We're good. So I guess what like takeaways? What would you say are kind of like the top things in your guys' opinion for like kind of like focusing on yourself and being able to enjoy your holidays and like move on from a relationship that like meant a lot to you? Go travel by yourself. That mm. was I did that one time. I I mean I wasn't even Nashville. in a serious relationship. Yep. Oh yeah. I went. Um, we That's had something we need to do. Yes. Oh. I need to get <gasps> Can we drive? We will. <laughs> I will oh drug you no. and put you on a plane. Don't Roger. worry. <laughs> It'll be like um, Watch out too, weekend, at, we come. <laughs> weekend at weekend at Bernie's. We're gonna like drug Jenna, and we'll be like, she's fine on the plane. Here's my mask. <laughs> Um, okay, no. So I was in a relationship. We had plane tickets to go, like meet his family or something like that, like for New Year's Eve, and we ended up breaking up um, because he met my family. That's a big thing I will say, girls is don't be afraid to bring someone home to your family too early. That's my thing. I I believe in that because sometimes there's red flags or things that you're too like Twitter pated to like see Mm -hmm. and your family will see it. And it was my, one of my older brothers who never has an opinion on anything other than politics. Um, (laughs) But he was like, yeah, no, I don't like this dude. And it really opened my eyes. So broke up with him. Or they'll really like him. Right. Yeah. So we broke up the day after Thanksgiving. I'm like, dang it. I have these plane tickets. So one of my clients was like, we'll just go to Nashville. I think I talked about this on a different episode. Yeah, you did. But traveling by yourself, it's just so amazing. And, like, you can't go somewhere where you already know someone. And I think I said it before, be safe and be smart about it. But when you travel by yourself and I brought – It's empowering. I brought my favorite book, Captivating, and I read that. And, like, on the plane and you just – you go and you meet people and you just – I don't know how to explain it. It's something like it's so cool magical. experience. So, I have never done that. Yeah. But I used to go to dinner in the movies alone a lot. Yeah. And I still would if Cinepolis was closer to my freaking house, but it's not now. Um, but yeah, I think like that's super empowering. Like you do those little steps, even though it feels scary, I feel like it empowers you. And yeah. like some people are afraid to go to the gym by themselves. I think that's super empowering too. Mm-hmm. Like, and you feel better, it releases endorphins. So even yeah. just yeah. walking outside. Or going to the gym and just using the treadmill yeah. for a minute and stretching, like and maybe I highly that recommend. Pushes you, that's good for you. It may not need to be as extreme as traveling by right. yourself, and you may not be able to afford it. That's healthy. Yeah. That's good for you. That gets you out there. Um, like go for a hike. Just go somewhere to be yeah. alone by yourself and just helps independence. Whether too. it's yes. God that you pray to or you meditate or whatever, just be like by yourself with whatever power you believe in and just really, you know, yeah. Um, that that's what I would suggest for anyone single that's a great right suggestion. now. Yeah. What do you think? And I think well, I was gonna say too is like it. it there's nothing that's gonna take away the pain that mm. it, of going through a holiday with you know a, a, someone who's passed or a relationship that's ended or whatever. Um, so I think it's good to prepare yourself that it's gonna hurt, but it'll never hurt as bad as it does now. Mm. It will get mm-hmm. easier. This is the first. There will be a second. There will be a third. This is the process. We've all been through it. Well, we could go through it again. Different stages of our lives, we'll have to go through it. You know, like and you get stronger they, from it. Yeah, you know, and it, it. This is just this is the process of life, and you know, you you're not alone in it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I think yeah. that's just important to know. It's like you don't you're not gonna find something to just cover it up and make the feeling go away. Like cooking your favorite meal or traveling or whatever, it's still gonna hurt. But like every single time you go through it, and every single holiday, and every single you know adventure or thing that you push yourself, it will get a little easier mm-hmm. each time so just yeah. remember it's just the first i just i'm hearing and give yourself grace <laughs> i'm hearing turn to in good my, habits yeah yes, turn good to good habits. habits yeah good habits yeah. not like drinking or <laughs> yeah you can do a little bit happen. of that like you could like get like a bottle not a bottle of vodka or something i just meant like a bottle of wine or something cook your favorite dinner have a friend over like play some board games yeah. like 
just do stuff that you wouldn't normally do to keep yourself occupied. Like you're going to have those moments where you cry. You're going to have those moments where you're sad. Um, But just remember all the shitty times and the things that that person did that pissed you off and didn't honor you or respect you or treat you the way that you deserve to be treated. And then remind yourself that you fucking deserve better Mm because you do, bitch. Mm Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You do, bitch. No, I was gonna say in my mind, I just keep hearing Kelly Clarkson. What doesn't kill you makes, makes you stronger. stronger. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, we should do like a karaoke episode. Mm. Mm. We would lose everybody that wa- like <laughs> listens right now. Let me tell you what. Yeah. Mm. I was singing the other day because I sing to the baby and Aww. talk to the baby. I just got Did you do affirmations? I would always do. Oh, that's a good idea. I have I, I would tell him affirmations like every day. Apparently, the baby can't um, hear super great right now, but like yeah. I'm 17 weeks, so can hear mm-hmm. somewhat. So singing, but yeah, when they come out, they're going to be like, please don't ever sing to me again. That was no. awful. <laughs> You know no, what's funny no, no. is I had my like songs that I would sing to Jensen in the womb, uh-huh. and I'm not kidding you. Like my child loves Randy Travis because I would play it all the time and Aww. sing it and listen. And then when he came out, he was crying, and I said, "Andy, turn on Randy Travis," and he stopped crying. And my kid like knows Randy Travis. So Randy, if you're listening, I love you, Randy Travis. That's why he stops uh, crying when I hold him. <laughs> oh, because he. Re- I'm like, what do you have to do with Randy Travis? No, because he recognizes your voice. Because he would hear me all the time. All the okay, time. so but mine was Willie Nelson. Oh, my, oh, mom nice. would, my mom and dad would play Willie Nelson all the time, and when I came out, they're like, the only thing that would get you to stop crying was the vacuum. It was comforting. And Willie Nelson. See, we need to go to Nashville. We do. Mm-hmm. I would Let's love to. go to Nashville. I would love to. Do an episode at Kristen's house. Heck yeah. Speaking of which, I thought I would tell you guys, i um, planning on going on a baby moon cruise in like mid-March or something to like Belize, Panama, something, so Aww. put it on your... Uh, to do like you want us to come? Go. Yeah, I'm inviting all on my, your baby. Mom. All my I I yeah. love you and I appreciate <laughs> that. I don't know if you the way that you can't get Jenna to go on a plane. I don't think I would get on a boat. See, I, I can will do not. I okay, you're invited. <laughs> I had a full on panic attack on the last cruise. Okay, I, but I have to get on oh, a plane. Really? Yeah. You have oh, to get no. on a boat. Oh, here's the thing: a plane is four or five hours, and you're off of it. A ship, you're out there for days in the middle of the ocean, and like. I don't know. I you don't chalk feel like it up to a ship, though. They have like go karts and yes, bowling you do. alleys and eye flies and movie theaters. It's like theaters. a floating island. Oh, I mean, yes. there are islands that are smaller than boats. I like land. I want to be on land. I hate the ocean. I hate the ocean. I hate flying over the ocean. I don't like the ocean either. And if I, I crash, I just it. want to crash on the ground and be done. <laughs> yeah. And I love our like squirrel conversation. Wow. <laughs> squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. I have to actually pee quite badly, so um, okay. we can wrap it up, I guess. Yes. If you guys have anything else to add about any um, last words? No, I think I think my biggest thing is I just I've never been in a situation where it's gotten physical and I don't like Jenna said it's so easy to just be like why are you still around like where you know and I it's hard to understand why women stay and I wish I wish they didn't. I'll just say if he's hit you once, it's done. It will happen again. It's either you, it's either in you or it's not. Mm-hmm. Period. You are not the kind of person. I totally agree. Like you are not. Like I would never ever hit anybody. I would Nobody, never hit anyone No, either. it's like you are either somebody that will hit somebody or you're not. Yeah. So if you've been hit, if you've been punched, if you have been slapped, it's done. Like it's going to happen again and because it's going to get worse. Am I, am I right in saying that it starts small and it gradually gets bigger? Like no one. It starts with manipulation. It starts with control. It starts with, um, it starts with lies, manipulation, control, um, and then hurting things and breaking things around you, mm-hmm. things that are important to you, tearing up pictures, tearing up frames. Like then it starts to become, you know, punching walls and, um, you know, breaking things and punching or stabbing things close to you, and then it becomes you. Mm-hmm. And then if they can't get to you through you, they will start getting to you through people that you love, your animals, your kids, your mm-hmm. family. I can't tell you how many times my ex said, if you leave me, I will kill you. I will kill your family. I will, like, I mean, just be done. Yeah. Like, if they I think you, you're done. I think, you too, to be done. this time of year, so many people, like, women are so afraid to be alone. It's Especially they don't around, around the around holidays. holidays, exactly, oh, and it's like Christmas. Look, like honestly, no. I swear on my life, if any of you are going through this, message us on our Instagram, mm-hmm. and like we will help you. I'm not kidding you. I don't care what state or country mm-hmm. you live in. Like we will seriously help you find somewhere, find someone. Like there's just mm-hmm. absolutely no excuse for any woman or any person to have to go through this kind of stuff. 
You are absolutely worth it. You are loved. You are beautiful. Like, there's just no reason for you to stay there, in something like it's, this. It's hard to get help. I had a support system. Yeah. So imagine how much harder it is for somebody to leave who doesn't have a support system. We will be it. <laughs> there are resources. There, I'll, the we'll try and is, leave some below, too. Yes, yeah. we need resources because I can tell you that a lot of these men and women, it's not just women. There are women that are abusive as well. Yes. Um, They will hurt them. They will come after them and they will kill them. They, I mean, so it's scary to leave. And the legal system, unfortunately, does a really shitty job of protecting women because they do look at it as, oh, well, you know, they went back. So it's not that bad or whatever. Or they're putting themselves in the situation. There are not a lot of safe places for people like that to go. Um, so that is a really, really hard situation. So maybe we can find some sort of like... I know there's a place in Escondido for, for women. Um, yeah. I'm not going to say where, but like there are places where you can go and they are, they, the man will not be able to find you um, or women, whatever. Um, they will provide safe housing for you and your kids and all of that mm. kind of stuff because it is scary and it is hard. Um, it's not just about leaving. It's about what do I leave? What do I do when I leave? Yeah. So I don't want to make it sound like it's super easy to leave. I had my mom, I had my dad, and it was so hard. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. And even if it's not resources. Yes. And even if it's not physically abusive, that's not the only time a relationship right. needs right. to end. So even if it isn't as dramatic or as awful as that, know what you deserve. And if Just you don't know, toxic. read some books and you can grow yep. and learn. Yeah. Um, well, that was a heavy one yeah. today. Yes. Glad we could throw in a few light squirrel subjects for you guys. But <laughs> just know that, like, honestly, these women have been through it. I mean, I think I can genuinely say for all of us that, like, we're here for any of our listeners. Like, you mm -hmm. know, and we would do anything to just help anyone. Yeah. There's you know? life after divorce. There's life after breakup. Look There's at these women. Life is short, though. Abuse. Life is short, though. So don't Don't delay. waste your time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get her done. Yeah. Get her done. Get her done. Get her done. All right. All with right. that, Kristen's got to pee. Yep. All yes. right. Cheers. cheers to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>